Hi, Tony. Uh, Anna Harrington, Australian Associated Press. Um, Tony, you've talked pretty consistently about depth in your roster and 23 and 23. Um, tonight, again, you went with an un well, tonight you went with an unchanged starting lineup um, after the team obviously had such a tight turnaround. I mean, why didn't you turn to depth and fresh legs in this game with clearly a pretty tired-looking team? Um, like I said in the press conference yesterday, if we lose, I know the question will come, and I think it's a fair question. If I would have rotated a lot of players and then lose, it would be why didn't you stick with it? And if I rotate, not rotating and, and lose, that will be a sharp question, which is fair, I think. Um, I want to take a moment to explain two parts of that. One, when I've said 23 and 23, um, that doesn't necessarily mean that 23 players should play. It means that we need 23 players. Uh, and the way that the players have supported each other, stuck together, Together, uh, even if it's a second or third goalkeeper or if it's a Kaya Simon that's there for a PK or if it's a game changer that know they were in the roster to just go in and do close out a game or going for a goal it's been 23 and 23 I want to be clear on that I really credit the players on that it's really been 23 and 23 in that sense so it means more than just playing time when it comes to the substitution, um, we've had a, a clear strategy going into tournaments based on experience, but also based on some stats. If you look at both men's and women's big tournaments and you look at teams that have gone far and won a lot of medals, continuity in starting lineup and less rotation in rosters have been a success factor. Um, and we believe in relationship. The more time you spend together, the better you play together. It's not necessarily always about the, the best players. But I also want to say this with the biggest respect to my game changers. I'm not criticizing them by saying this. The players know that this has been a clear strategy. You saw it in the Olympics, you saw it now. Uh, we think it might be the reason why this team have uh, been able to break barriers and, and bypass and, and break records and, and create history. We think that could be a reason why. Um, we did know today that we needed to go to the bench earlier because we could push for an hour. Um, if you look at a play like Katrina Gore, for example, the way she pushed through tonight for 60 minutes, uh, um, she was, in my opinion, very, very good that hour. Uh, so I don't regret that that she played, even though she, like you know, she didn't even train yesterday to, to be available. Unfortunately, when we made the subs, I've said it before, it's, it's the, trying to find the right timing and the momentum. When do you do it? And yeah, unfortunately, we conceded a goal two minutes after that double sub. And it's like one of those where, let's do the sub, let's get some energy, let's get some momentum. And then you concede a goal two minutes after. And I'm not blaming the subs on that. It's just the, the momentum and the timing of it. And that, that hurt us a bit, uh, a bit tonight. I think it's a fair question, but I still stand by my decision and, and believe in what's best for the team. Just a question here. Um, now, Tony, Joey Lynch for ESPN. You talked about breaking barriers. This team now has made the final four of a, an Olympic Games. It's made the final four of a World Cup. Where does the next evolution come from? Because we've seen England have evolved and now made a final. Spain's evolution has been rapid. What does, how does this team need to evolve and change and go to, to go to the next level and start breaking into finals now? What do they need to add to their game? I would love to have a debate and a sit down and a workshop with all of you and the FA and a lot of people in the grassroots and, and football in this nation to, to talk about that because we have a massive amount of work to do now to capitalize on, on this. Um, I think it's a massive achievement for these players considering the resources if you can compare the, fin the financial resources in the top 10 ranked teams with how much we get return of investment to be able to break into to the top four in the world I think it's it's unique um, I think these players have in some way overachieved uh, if you look at where the players played compared to the top 10 nations in terms of how many players do we have in top teams in top leagues starting consistently uh, I've said that before like if you look at Rasso, Mary and Alana, three bench players in City, um, all other players starts in England, for example. That's just one comparison. I don't say as disrespect to the players, but I think it's amazing to see that the players coming into this environment is performing the football they do, considering the, the little game time that they've had in, in clubs. Look at a Claire Hunt, for example, as well, with the limited experience she has. Um, but the next, the next thing now is investment. Uh, you know, long-term investment, you know, not just a quick fix, because a lot of these players, I think, is going to play the Olympics as well. So it's like keeping investing in these players and have a lot of players knocking on the door wanting to be a part of it. But then now it's the long-term investment to really make sure we benefit of this crossroad moment for women's football in this country. Thank you. Thank you. Tony, hi, Tom. Tom Smith is from Keep Up. Um, you mentioned the other day that you never regret bringing Kaya Simon here. Um, Clearly, she wasn't able to, to take part in the end, but were there any circumstances in which you could have used her? 
uh, the PK shootout. Um, I could have used her there. I think you saw she was next to me uh, in that technical area for that France game when I explained why why I didn't do that. Uh, but that's the only part I could have used her. Okay. Question here. Yeah, please. Uh, hey, Beatrice Nordensson. Sorry, maybe I, maybe I need to make that clear. That wasn't the case when I selected her. But she had some setbacks in her training during the World Cup, so she wasn't able to be a game changer. So she became just a PK taker. Just to be clear on that, if I didn't explain that well enough. Nu kör jag. Sorry. Hej, Björn Odensson, TT Nyhetsbyrå. Du, vad säger du om straffen som Sverige fick? Oh, ja, det, jag vill inte sitta här och låta som en bitter förlorare och skylla på någonting. Eh, men det är klart att när man, man tycker den är tuff. Eh, så är det. Jag tror att den kanske kunde bli dumd åt, åt vilket håll som helst. Eh, den blev dumd till, till Sveriges favör nu. Men jag tycker inte att det är där vi förlorar matchen. Eh, även om det är ett kritiskt moment i matchen och det leder till 1-0. Så eh, kanske tufft dumt men jag vill absolut inte sitta här och, och vara bitter över det. För jag tycker Sverige är bättre lag än oss ikväll. Please question there. Yeah, thank you. Tony, Vince Regari, City Morning Herald. Uh, I know you got asked yesterday about um, Jill Ellis volunteering you as an option for the US national team. Just wanted to ask you, um, are you keen to stay on this journey with this team that you've, you've brought them to the final four of a World Cup, your contracts to Paris? Uh, are you keen to see that out or even extend it if, if FA want to? Well, first of all, we, we know how this business works, and I think the loss today is probably going to influence some people's opinion about me as a coach. It, it's how it works, and it's it's fair. Um, from a broader perspective, if you look a couple of weeks ahead, when when we do a review, like we always do, and I know FA is keen on making an in-depth review after each tournament, like they did after Olympics, after Asian Cup, that will be made now as well. And that review, I think we're going to learn a lot about me as a coach, about the team, about preparation, about investment. Um, what I can say is I love working with this team. Um, it's It resonates with me as a coach, their identity and their why. Um, and I've said it before, I, I don't see this as an end of a journey. I see it as a beginning of a journey. Uh, but I also want to be very clear that I want to see investment now. I really do. I want to see investment. And I mean like real investment that we're serious about what we do. Question there. Yeah, thank you. Tracy Holmes, ABC. Um, just on that, what what does that look like? Investment. What sort of money are you talking about? Where should the investment be? Where is that growth going to come from? And uh, I'm sure that in the back of your mind through this tournament, you've still also got a little bit of space where you're thinking about what's next with the Olympics. How different do you think the team will look next year in Paris? Um, take the second part first with Olympics. I think a lot of these players are keen on staying uh, for another major tournament together. Uh, I have no signals for any players about retirement or anything. Um, and we have a good mix about experience and young players. Um, in that sense, I think it can be an advantage as well to have some continuity in a roster going from one tournament to another. And it's a very short turnaround with, with few windows and few days to prepare with qualifiers coming up. But I also know there's some exciting players knocking on the door. Uh, if you look at extended roster we had before we selected it. It was tough to keep some of those players out. So I hope they keep knocking on the door and make those decisions difficult. Uh, but I'm excited about the Olympics. I really am very excited. But we can't jump ahead and think we're going to be there because we have a qualifiers first to deal with. So we need to focus on one step at a time. Uh, when it comes to investment, there's some very interesting documents out there, everything from 11 principles to the gap report to the legacy document. There's people that knows more about uh, football in this country than I do when it comes to resources, how they should be used best possible way. There's some key areas that is interested, I think. One is obviously the grassroots. Uh, the more players that play, the better players we will get. Uh, the more players that stays and stay longer in the game, the better players we will have. Uh, facilities is definitely a key area as well, so grassroots and facilities. Myself is working in the high performance space, so obviously I'm going to be passionate about the high performance space. And we've already done some major change in investments since I came on board. We now have a full-time goalkeeper coach, we now have a full-time physio, we now have a full-time sports scientist. That didn't exist when I came on board. Um, and then there's another space I'm passionate about. And that's the, the U20 or U23 space, that gap that we have from the youth national team to the senior national team. I think we need a massive investment in that space because we've seen some players coming through that the step has been too big to go from the youth national team up to senior national team. And that middle step in between um, has to be invested in. And that's just a few areas. But today, a bit too emotional to be clear and sharp on that answer. But I'm looking forward to discuss it, debate it, and, and come up, hopefully, with the federation having a very clear idea how we can best use the resources moving forward. 
We'll take the last question here. Thank you. Um, Tony, just one, firstly, quickly follow up. When you say Kaya's, the timeline on Kaya, so she had a setback. Was that um, after her selection, was that before the tournament started or once the tournament had actually started and you couldn't replace her with another player? Yeah, it was actually both. To be honest, she had a minor, smaller, smaller. So we sh she was selected, being available, and did the last two weeks of training and pre-camp. She was phenomenal. Played in eleven aside and did a really good job. Then, after the selection up in Gold Coast, she had a minor setback, just a minor one, a little knock. We knew it was not going to be a problem, um, so that's why I kept her. And then after the window closed, she had another setback where she was just able to take a PK. Okay. And apologies if you answered this question in Swedish and you did hint at it a few times, but could you just walk us through the game itself tonight? What were you hoping to accomplish and what, how did you think it evolved throughout the course of the 90s so it ended up the way it did? Mm, first of all, I think Sweden came out flying. I think first 50 minutes they were all over us. Uh, pressing high, we couldn't get out on our own half. Uh, very, very direct in their attack. Uh, I think we struggled. Um, but that's typical Sweden. You saw them come out against Japan doing similar, against Spain doing similar. Uh, we knew it was coming, especially with 24 hours more recovery. We knew they were going to come out flying, but I don't think we handled it very well, those 50 minutes. Uh, it was more playing the game in front of us and find a way to survive those, those 50 minutes, which we did. Then I think we got into the game when we played over that press and then started to get attack against their back line. We had a couple of really good sequences in there. Um, and then that one moment of the PK that really cost us. Um, you know, scoring the first goal in a bronze medal game is massive. Um, that PK hurt us a lot in terms of the, the momentum in the game. Second half, we spoke about a couple of tactical adjustment, which I think paid off good in the in the second half, uh, but it didn't pay off in, in goals. I think we break the press more often. We were better at changing the point, uh, so we got faced up against the back line a lot. That dropped off early for the respect of Sam, and we find that space in between a little bit more often. Um, you know me, and I don't want to sit here and talk too much about stats, but the stat says it was a very, very even game, uh, except the PK, because the XG shoots up the roof when it's a PK, but take that out, everything is very equal. They were more efficient than us. But at the end of the day, I think we lost against a better team. I think Sweden was better than us tonight.